I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and this is a look at the three main types of face masks that people are using during the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you've been following the news, you've probably heard a lot of different terms thrown around when it comes to face masks. And if you live anywhere in the United States, or really a lot of countries that are affected by COVID-19, you may live in an area where face masks are now either recommended or required, especially with reopening. But what are the different kinds of face masks? What are the differences between them? Um, you know, what are terms like N95? What does that actually mean? Um, so I've got three of the, uh, the typical kinds of face masks that people might use during COVID-19. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one and the differences between them. So this one over here on the left is an N95 mask. Um, and you may have heard that term thrown around. What does it actually mean? N95 means that this traps 95% of particles smaller than 0.3 microns. Um, so very, very tiny particles. And it's actually not as small as the virus itself, but it is as small as the droplets that uh, are believed to transmit the virus. Nothing certain at this point, um, but the droplets that are believed to transmit the virus in the air are very, very tiny. Um, and this is actually a good enough filter to filter most of those out. Um, this one is a 3M mask. Um, that's a very legitimate manufacturer. There's been some political issues around them and N95 masks, um, but these are made in, in China now. They're made uh, all over the world, really. And this is sort of the gold standard. Um, at the moment, they're in relatively short supply. So if you have ones that are unworn, these are really meant more for first uh, responders, for frontline medical staff members, that kind of thing. Um, so if you have one and you haven't worn it, uh, the best thing you can do is actually donate it. And a lot of different hospitals will accept these now because these are really the gold standard. And again, the reason for that is that with that high level of filtration, they're actually able to filter out uh, the particles that are floating around in the air and protect the wearer to some degree anyway from the virus. Uh, they also have a fairly tight fit. Um, you can do a fit test. I actually did one of these myself on myself. Um, and uh, using a, a chemical called stannic chloride. And I found that uh, this mask actually does a great job of protecting me from anything floating around in the environment like that. Um, so these are really the gold standard here with an N95 mask. Um, but if you can, if you do have them, I had already worn this one, so I held on to it. Uh, but if it's not something that you've worn, you should go ahead and donate these because they're really the only mask that provides a high, high level of protection against the virus to the wearer. And that's very important for people who are on the front lines right now. Um, one other comment about N95 masks, you may have heard that some of these are actually banned under certain areas. Uh, orders. So why is that? The reason is that some of these masks have this valve on the front. And this is uh, from the time before COVID when these were mostly used um, for construction projects. They were used sometimes in a medical setting. But um, again, this is really designed to protect the wearer from things in the environment. So this valve, because it's relatively hard to breathe through an N95 mask, uh, this valve actually lets the air that the person wearing the mask breathes out easily pass through. It's a one-way valve. So when you breathe in, it closes. The air passes through the actual filtration uh, uh, system here. And then when you breathe out, this opens and allows the air to come out more easily. Now the issue is that this protects you, but if you're still breathing the air out of this mask, if you have the virus um, and you're wearing an N95 with a valve, you're actually still spreading it out of the mask. It's not doing anything to filter the air coming out of you. It's just filtering the air going in. So it protects you, but not people around you. So in a lot of orders um, about the use of masks, they actually ban masks with a valve because although you're protecting yourself, you're not protecting the people around you. So if you have these masks and they do have a valve and you've already worn it and you wanna go out and use this or you're on the front lines, there's a really simple solution and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but just something to be aware of if you, you know, get stopped and told you can't wear one of these, usually they're referring not to the N95 itself, but to the valve. Um, from a decorum point of view, um, sometimes you, know, you might get dirty looks if you wear one of these around in public if you're not. A first responder um, because again N95s really at this point are supposed to be for those people who are on the front lines and ideally those that are actually treating patients. So another kind of mask this is a surgical mask and this is a basically still a medical grade mask but it's one step down from the N95 and this is what you would see people wear if they're you know performing a surgery or a medical procedure this is actually the, the side that faces towards the user um, and it's 
fairly simple looking. It's actually a much more complicated device than it initially appears. So there's actually three layers here. Um, the first layer is a filter. On the inside, there's another filter. Um, and then on the other side here, there's actually a waterproof layer. And this protects the user from splashes. Um, and that's part of the big piece of why this is significant for COVID-19. Because oftentimes COVID-19 patients are um, you know, breathing out droplets, they're sneezing, they're coughing. So for people who are on the front lines or who are medical workers, that waterproof protection is actually really helpful. And I'll show in another video, you can actually fill this with water and it'll uh, retain it in there. So that protects you from those liquid drops uh, to some extent. Now it's not like the N95 where it seals around your face and makes an airtight seal. This is really just blocking your nose and mouth. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're wearing it, you put these loops over your ears and put this over your face. There's a little metal strip in a lot of these that can conform to your nose to make it fit a little bit better. Um, but, you know, really it's leaving space open on the sides. Now, how important is that? Uh, it's not quite clear at the moment. Initially, it was thought that these were not very effective and that really only the N95 was effective in a medical setting. Now there's some um, thinking that these are actually nearly as effective probably depends on how the virus spreads, but certainly these are good enough that they're now being used in a lot of medical settings in place of N95s, except for procedures where um, there's going to be a lot of coughing, like an intubation or something like that. You would use an N95. A lot of medical providers are now using these. Um, and again, because of the way that they're built, it's not just a simple piece of fabric. It is those three different levels. It uses a very specialized manufacturing process. So getting these is relatively challenging to do. Um, especially having them made well and up to standards. So if you have these, again, uh, go ahead and donate them to your local hospital or, your, or to your city if they'll accept those donations. Um, they're really needed a lot on the front lines. Um, and, uh, you know, again, some protection uh, against the virus for the wearer. The other thing that's good with these is that it does protect others around you fairly well from the virus because as you're breathing out, the filter is capturing a lot of the droplets that you would be breathing out. Um, and then also there's, again, this waterproof layer here. So if there's liquid droplets, they're gonna get stuck in the mask to a large extent. And that's why these are often used before COVID-19. They were used in a hospital for people who are coming in and who could potentially have the flu um, and were coughing and sneezing. So they have people wear these and still do. So that if you're coughing and sneezing, this is trapping all of the droplets that you're expelling and hopefully keeping them contained there. Uh, the problem with these is that they don't last a super long time because they are trapping a lot of the condensation and liquid and droplets that you're breathing out. This tends to get wet. Uh, it starts to fray. If you have a beard um, or anything, then it can get caught in that. Another note is if you do have a beard and you're wearing an N95, your seal might not be as good, so you might want to consider shaving. Um, but if you are wearing one of these, you know, they last for a couple of wears, but not nearly as long as a good N95. Originally, these were usually thrown away after eight hours. Now, actually, a lot of people have started to retain them for up to a month, which is kind of terrifying. Um, I've read reports about doctors actually boiling these to preserve them so they can use them for a long time. Um, again, not necessarily something the manufacturer recommends, but uh, you know, now in these desperate times, people are really getting uh, creative and there are some approved sterilization techniques for these. But this is a step down, the gold standard. Um, and then here's what you should be using if you're not on the front lines. This is a cloth mask. Um, so the CDC actually has recommendations for how to sew one of these yourself. You can also go as I did, I went to a neighbor. A lot of people have been making these and donating them. Um, and it's a very simple type of setup. It's basically a piece of cloth folded over um, and then with some kind of an ear loop attached into it. In this case, it's a little elastic band. People use a string and other kinds of things to make these. Um, and then on the inside, sometimes people will include a little pocket and they'll insert some kind of homemade filter material. So that can be another piece of fabric. Um, people have used uh, vacuum cleaner bags, Swiffer cloths, um, all kinds of things. And you can look up online, there's lists of different materials that are effective as filters in there. These are usually washable, so you can run it through the washing machine. And um, it's unknown whether it provides a lot of protection for you when you're wearing it. Uh, it may, it's probably better than nothing. Um, so if you're putting this on your face, it's, per it's filtering to some extent, especially if you have some kind of a filtration material 
in there, but what it is probably doing, again, nothing is certain at this point, but what it is probably doing is preventing if you're sneezing, coughing, or breathing out the virus, if you're infected, especially if you're asymptomatic and you don't know about it, it's keeping all that contained to your body so that you're not coughing and sneezing and breathing on others around you. So really this one is less about protecting the wearer, it's more about protecting the people around you, which again is extremely essential, and if everybody does wear them, then you're enjoying some level of protection as well. So unless you're on the front lines, this is really what you should be uh, wearing. You really shouldn't be using these because these are um, really something that you should be donating unless you've worn it before, in which case you probably shouldn't donate it. You can go ahead and use it until it does wear out. Um, just uh, again a note, I had these uh, before, these were given to me um, or something that I actually purchased to donate and I had to use some of these for testing, so I have some left over. But again, if you have them, go ahead and uh, and donate them if you uh, are able to. And then um, try to get yourself one of these. You can make it yourself, you can get uh, someone to make it for you. There's some simple things you can do with just a bandana with no sewing involved, where you just basically put rubber bands around a bandana, any kind of cloth that covers your, your nose and mouth. Um, and then going back again to what I said about this valve here. So what if you have one of these N95s and you want to wear it, um, but uh, you're not able to under the way that your local order is written? Uh, this is a very simple solution. Take your N95, take a fabric mask, put the fabric mask on over top of it. This way you're enjoying the protection for yourself of the N95, but you're covering that valve um, with a cloth mask and protecting the people around you. So it looks a little bit weird, but you'll get the uh, maximum level of protection out of this. A couple of caveats, uh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not uh, a medical scientist of any kind, so disclaimer there, this is just the information I've found in my own research. As if you're a vulnerable population or anything like that, then you should definitely talk to your own doctor, um, find the best solution for you. Um, this is not medical advice and I'm not qualified to give any kind of medical advice. This is just based on my own research and my own experience with these different kinds of masks and protection. Um, the other thing I would say is that if you are wearing these, it's not an excuse to go out and violate your local stay at home order. Um, this is better than nothing in terms of protection, but the best protection is to follow whatever the recommendations are in your area, whether that's staying at home um, or, you know, avoiding going out to certain locations, avoiding being indoors, follow your public health orders. Uh, but if you do need to go out, these are some solutions, again, that you can use, especially the cloth mask, um, and you just might be curious about what some of these other things are. Um, so these are the different options. N95, gold standard, protects the wearer. Um, the surgical mask, it's looking more and more like these provide a measurable level of detection, medical grade. Both of these are really for medical staff members and frontline workers. This is what you should get, a face mask, a cloth face mask. Make it yourself, get someone who's good at sewing to make it for you, or even improvise one with a bandana and some rubber bands. Uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel, it really helps.